O, John Deere. Po, Zmimerek. O, Zmimerek. Po, po, po. I'm Scottish. I like trains and I like diesels. How long did you think this was going to take? In fact, I only bought this a few days after the 57, but shh. Now, I can... Most likely you already think what you're th what you're saying aloud right now at the screen, just screaming at yourself. But Scott, why did you buy the Bachman Class 37? Or in this guy's it's still an English Electric Type 3. Why didn't you buy the Acura Scale one? It's a very good reason for that. Let's say that these NEMs are the home of double O gauge. This is their home, this is where they live. I'll let you take this Fleischmann coupler. This is where I live. When things have to go from here to here, costs extra money. There's a conversion rate, and border control doesn't really like it when you ship things in that are not part of Fleischmann country, right? Now, imagine that I am in 00 country, and I find something that I like. Why do I not buy it then instead of waiting for another product to arrive slightly later, in order to have to pay more money to get it to where I am. Basically, Brexit. I mean, it is a class 37. Perhaps the most iconic British diesel next to the Gronk. And with the class 37, they have various shapes. They have various eras that make it so that there is a class 37 for anyone. Now I chose this one. I bought this one in Edinburgh at, I believe the store is called Harbon Hobbies. And they had three variations. One was in BR Blue, which... Eh, and one had the central head code, and one had the split head code. And the split head code 37, the 37 stroke 0, I believe it is, is my favourite guys these locomotives ever had. And, do you know, the stupid thing is, I bought this when it was only actually one of the last days I was in the United Kingdom. And before that, I went to the Strathspey Railway, where I picked up Loco Spotters Annual. This is the 1964 edition. And in the opening of the book, they talk about the British diesels that were emerging at the time. There's Lion. And now look at this page. Look at the number of that diesel. Does that number not look like D6710? And its head code reads I51, right? Huh. Huh. What a coincidence. Now, this is the non-sound-fitted version. It's the, the quote-unquote standard release of the Bachman 37. Which does mean that I had to chip this. Uh, actually, this and the 57 both have DAPL uh, DCC chips in them. This does result in problems with the 37 in particular because only one cab light is illuminated using the DAPL decoder, and it's this end. It just doesn't want to do the other end, I don't know why. Similarly, when the function is said to be function, I believe it's function. Five to turn on the engine room lights with the DAPL decoder, it's function 4. Why? I don't get why you have to use Bachman's decoder for in order to make all the functions both work and adhere to the function numbers that they are given, they are assigned. And I don't get that because not everyone, let's be real, not everyone is going to put a Bachman decoder in a Bachman product. I mean, when I import something from the UK, I almost always buy a decoder alongside it. And for instance, when I buy something from Liverpool based model railway retailer, I ship it with one of their decoders. Now, no, not everyone is going to put a Bachman decoder in this thing. Which then results in not all the functions adhering to the addresses that are given in the manual and that not all functions function. This is then going to result in people complaining, but 9 times out of 10, they'll complain about the Bachman model instead of the decoder. Now, might just be me, but I think that's a lose-lose situation for Bachman because their decoders are more expensive, so people are not going 
to buy them as often, and when they then buy something else and the model doesn't function as they say it would, they are then going to complain about the Bachman model. So then why bother with proprietary chips? I, I don't get it. I-37, yes you are. Uh, another thing about uh, when I tried to chip this, um, the body is on unnecessarily tight. Uh, there are a couple of screws and each bonnet, then there are screws beside the bogey, and I believe there's also one, yeah, there are ones next to the fuel tanks. When you've done undone all of those screws, and put them neatly aside, because else you maybe put the wrong screws into the wrong thread, you then very carefully, and very is now both in bold and in italics, have to ease the body away. And I was so afraid I was going to break something on this thing, like I did on the Sonic A5, uh, but the Sonic A5 was £150, and this one was a three-figure sum with a two at the front, so, oh dear. Also, uh, because of all the lighting that I now cannot use, because it's a, it's a dapple decoder in this thing, and the dapple decoders, by the way, I bought at Scooney Hobbies, they give me a good deal on them. Thank you, Scooney. You have to undo the plugs, and I only undid them at one end so I could ease the body and lift it up like so, but, oh man, it... <sighs> It's not very maintenance friendly because almost all the circuitry is hiding the actual motor. So, you know, oiling and, and cleaning, it's not very maintenance friendly. Now, I do think that this one is a little forgivable because having seen this run, it, it, it runs like a dream. I don't think it will be a maintenance heavy locomotive, but, but still, I... You don't have to make opening up your model such a painful experience. We don't have to do that. That having been said, it's a 37. Of course I love this thing. I would have preferred it having yellow ends, but it not having yellow ends is not a deal breaker for me. The, the finish on this is lovely. The performance on this is second to none. It performs, dare I say, better than the 57. And... It's a tractor, I like this. <laughs> now, you might wonder why I fitted Cadies to this. Uh, well, I've done the moldy raspberry thing where I snapped off the uh, uh, little metal hook at the bottom so that it doesn't catch itself on points. And I, I, I like that solution because currently the only thing that have my Cadies fitted are my passenger engines and my carriages. But as of yet, I still don't, I have no intention to run this thing on uh, <laughs> the freight stock because it's too long for the siding, so it can't shunt the freight stock. So it not being able to pull freight stock, fine by me. But you're, of course, curious as to the performance. So that's coming up now. Hint. You don't need to have to hint. You know it's going to be good. Right. The Class 37, although this one is, of course, still in English Electric Type 3 form, pre-tops. I've seen this one already work at the shop I bought it from. I believe it was Harborn Hobbies, the name of the shop was, in Edinburgh. But, ah, come on, let's, let's pretend like this is the first time. Ooh, seems to struggle a bit. Let's try that again backwards. Calm down, autofocus, calm down. Come on, you can do it. I almost think that's just the result of the twin flywheels like with the J36, where it also has to wind up before it can go, but... Let's, let's just first send her around for a few laps and let's see what she does then. Half speed.
so after a short spell of running in, yeah, it's a lot less hesitant to start moving now. I will say though, with the 55, uh, 57, excuse me, there was a lot more notable flywheel action. Now I think this one has twin flywheels, but... Hmm. To me that looks like it doesn't have a flywheel, but we'll see. But the most important thing at this juncture, can it survive the killer? Okay then. Ooh. Hesitation. But it does do it. It does hit the frog. It does hit the frog. But it snaps itself to the correct position. Which is exactly the opposite of what that dreaded rapido thing did. It just decided to climb the frog. I mean, it's never going to do this in operation, but can it do it at speed? Even at speed, it's fine. So that's one for Bachman. Two, actually. Because the other diesel also managed to do it, the 57. And zero for, for Rapido. Yeah, I'm over the moon with this. Now then, let's get it fitted. Having had the Loco DCC fitted for a few weeks, I've come to a few unfortunate observations. Observation 1. Due to the fitting of a non-Bachman decoder, I cannot use a few of the functions. Observation 2. Bachman states the model has dual flywheels, but those do absolutely nothing for this Loco. Observation 3. I am fully aware that running with a cab lighting on is unprototypical, but with only one cab being illuminated no matter what I try, it beats the purpose of this locomotive being double-ended. Observation 4, and this is the big one. There are so many features on this locomotive I paid for but cannot use. So let's for a moment look at the model for what it is. It is a version of a model with sound, spinning fans and re reflective glass gutted in such a way to paywall the very experience this locomotive was designed to provide. And with me not owning an older release of a Bachman 37, I therefore cannot talk about that one's merits when compared to this newest offering, which many people will do and are keen on examining. In many ways, this model has more value to someone who already owns an older Bachman class 37 and wishes to compare the two. But for someone like me who wanted their first ever class 37, the aforementioned nature of the model as a stripped down version of an existing product it was released alongside with means that I would have always had lesser experience regardless, as the new decoder system is daft and the model doesn't have the very features it was intended to have. This middle of the road offering, in a world where there are still plenty of older brand new Bachman 37s for sale, negates its own purpose. Owning this model is bittersweet. I like it, and I will run it for many years to come. But it could have been so much more. Okay, so uh, this is actually uh, filmed right after I'm. Uh, I've I've just done the off the cuff thing. Like the the, the loco is still here, uh, but uh, something I forgot to mention is. They simplified the Bachman logo. Look, it, it's lost the shadows. The, the, the long shadows that are on the sides of the letters. Why, why did they do that? No one likes when you simplify your logos. Come on, man. Who does that and thinks it's a good idea? <laughs>